Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Essential Wrestling Podcast. Uh, I'm back for the time being, even if it is just for one week. Uh, I'm back in the host chair. I get to hang out with my friends today. I'm excited about that. Uh, not sure if it was made public last week on the show. I know it was in the comments uh, by one, I believe, I don't know if it was James Wheeler. It might have been James. Uh, last week was CM Punk's birthday. <laughs> Last Tuesday, so that was fun, and I'm sure Ryan had a huge party for him. Um, also, more most importantly, I guess, uh, it was Pat Sajak's birthday as well last Tuesday. Um, great host of the Wheel of Fortune, uh, probably the biggest celebrity born on that day. I just so happened to be born on that day as well. Uh, and I need to throw this out publicly because I just got this in the mail yesterday. Here is, for those of you who can't see it on the inscription, it is an autographed picture of Deanna Perrazzo where it says, I spy a Jersey guy signed by the virtuosa Deanna Perrazzo two times. And on the bottom, you can see there vaguely, hashtag Jersey strong. That's badass. <laughs> John DeConnie, unbelievable. You just made the wall, my friend. There you go. She's going right there. She will be up the entire episode. Thank you so much. Happy birthday to you. gentlemen welcome to episode i want to say it's 79 i believe when i when i came on to the stream yard finger system was uh 79 in my notes all over the place it was episode 78 i even lost a week uh <laughs> all of my mess uh thank you once again for joining us on this uh, wonderful tuesday night with us as i just uh i couldn't thank you enough on the bottom part of our stream uh our first ever WWE champion and the newest addition to the new wall, I guess, being created in, uh, in my studio, uh, John DeCani, the living legend. Thank you, John. And most importantly, I forgot to that. Thank you, Deanna Perrazzo. Oh, my God. Thank you. And what a sweetheart she was. It, it was a virtual signing like this. I didn't get on in time to talk to her, but I saw her, her segment uh, while she was signing it live. I even have a screen cap of her holding up that picture in her hand. I'll get that to you as well. But... What a sweetheart she is as a heel. Like, she, you know, she plays a heel on TV. She's kind of believable as the bitch, but in real life could not be a sweeter human being. Unbelievable. That's it. Seriously, she's 15 minutes from me in Hackettstown. That's where you born. You want the County College of Morris, another 10 minutes away? Unbelievable. John Smith uh, chimed in with luggage last year. Still a great gift I use every day. So I'm, I'm, not, I'm not here trying to show you all yeah. right yeah, well, I this, show up this, to your house with that luggage quite frequently. <laughs> this year's gift must be lost in transit or something. I'm uh, sure it is. I'm sure all, it is. All, all I got to offer you this year is eternal friendship. How's that sound? I like that. And then getting my <laughs> and then get my first loss in the eliminator for that. I'll take that as my birthday gift. <laughs> uh, I guess I have a little bit of ring rust and all my chaos trying to get ready for the show today. I forgot my headlines. Um, I know we're gonna talk about uh uh, Biggie and Kevin Owens had a champion. There was a championship match last night on Raw. Uh, I know there was a huge match between Chris Saban and Ace Austin from Impact. The uh, championship eliminator tournament is coming to fruition. Uh, we're gonna main event the show with AEW with Dynamite and with Rampage uh, going into what is going to be an amazing full gear car. But we're going to curtain jerk the show with Halloween Havoc. Uh, absolutely. Fun show last week. I was able to catch this live. And uh, John Smith, it seemed like you were on an island last week from what I was told. Uh, I missed the pig segment. I chimed in late. I caught the beginning of Bound for Glory when I was driving on uh, the, the Cross Island Expressway with Hollywood Chris Picani. Shout out if Chris is watching right now. Uh, I was with you, though. I'm sorry I didn't get a chance to chime in. I was with you. Yeah, see, I thought, I mean, for weeks I was getting badgered. Are you going to switch your pick? Are you going to switch your pick? Oh, Breaker's the future. Breaker's the future. And you weren't here. 
And so I really thought I was on an island by myself because you didn't ever chime in. But you know what? You know, Breaker versus Choppa was an awesome match. You know, we had a couple slip ups, literally and figuratively, by Breaker, you know, especially that second rope, you know, shoulder block that he tried to do where he just totally face planted himself. But um, Choppa came out looking wind face as hell with that, with that, um, I don't even know what that that thing that get up he was wearing some sort of viking something looking like the viking raiders dad or something um comes out and has to put him away with one willow's bells and a bunch of knees that i forget what he calls them the knee that like everybody does now basically a, a v trigger then another willow's bell plus he had to ddt him on the outside on the concrete beforehand to put him away. So Breaker still comes out looking strong, but he wasn't ready for that title. And you could tell by watching him in this match. Yeah. I, I, Tommaso Ciampa did use that knee before it was cool. That was DIY's finisher, right? Johnny would come mm-hmm. in with like a, like a kick and then Ciampa would come in with the knee. So uh, there you go. Kenny Omega ripping off Tommaso Ciampa. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm back, baby. John DeConi. Uh, that was our lone title defense. We have, some, we're going to talk about some history, I guess, the rest of the way. Uh, the first thing we're going to talk about, Raquel Gonzalez, uh, she went, I don't know if you want to go, Undertaker with the motorcycle. You can go, I guess, Jinder Hall was riding a bike. I don't know who she was ripping off. It's not uncommon for someone, but she was badass riding her uh, motorcycle into the, uh, the CWC. She spun the wheel. Chucky's choice, trick or street fight or street fight yes um <clears throat> and these two uh you know they went almost 12 minutes and you know we don't really know mandy much as a technician but uh she made a good showing raquel of course you know was the mostly dominant uh powerful wrecker that she usually is and then we had uh, a masked figure show up and crack her in the back of the skull with a shovel and that would allow uh, that would allow Mandy uh, to hit a running knee, her, her her running jumping knee, if you will, and that would put down Raquel Gonzalez for the one two three hashtag and new women's champion, the first female to wear gold to ever come out of a tough enough for uh, yeah well, what was that oh yeah yeah tough enough program huh. uh, your new NXT women's champion Mandy Rose. Wow. Yeah, I didn't really put two and two together on that. Yeah, Nidia never won it. And then I guess uh, who was, the, who was the, the, the tall one that was walking around with uh, – Shaniqua? Bash ones. Yeah, the Basham brothers. And then there was Jackie Gata. Yeah, Miss Jackie. That's right. She was in, no, she wasn't in Playboy. No, she wasn't in Playboy, was she? Not close enough. Anyway, but yeah, so Dakota Kai, the big story here. And I want to say, yeah, she's back. And I have a few of Kel. They're going to tear it down. The way the women's division at NXT does, and then Mandy Rose finally gets a championship. That should not be ignored. But the big thing with Dakota, you know, she, she got the the snub. It's official now. Like she's not. We thought maybe she wasn't drafted, and then NXT said, "Oh, maybe they're just gonna give her her own moment. Maybe she'll come out and jump Tegan again, or you know, this way, whatever." And she, it is official. She snubbed, and uh, maybe now, whatever. Just get get that NXT title now. Uh, and and go forward and be better because Dakota Kai is a star. I uh, she's absolutely amazing. The reason why she can't kick Mandy Rose's face off two heels though. I don't feel want to. I mean, that's a great. That's some great heel on heel action, John Smith. Yeah, well, they, uh, Dakota and uh, and Raquel, I think are going to both end up in the Royal Rumble. You know, I that would be awesome. They're going to have they're going to have their blood feud that culminates at the next takeover, whenever that is, probably around Royal Rumble time. Yeah, and then yes. maybe the next night they're both. They go right back at it on in the rumble, you know. Yeah. And that, that the night was uh, that was how the night ended for Toxic Attraction, John DeConi. It started off pretty badass as well on on the scared way to hell. <laughs> <laughs> Ninety eight SummerSlam, right? Austin walked through the fire with the garbage cans on fire. Scared way to hell, right? Was- Absolutely, yeah. That that kicked off the show for us. Uh, it was uh, JC and Gigi uh, versus EO and Zoe and Indy and Persia. In their scare way to hell ladder match, uh, you know this one was a, it was a little clunky. The match overall, uh, at one point you had uh, Indy toppling the big ten foot ladder, sending EO 
oh dear God, oh, you know, over the top rope to that bridge ladder to the announce table. And she didn't even hit it square. Like, you know, when EO isn't making clean spots, you know, overall the match is going to be a little shaky, if you will. Uh, but luckily it seems she's okay. Uh, then Indy would climb up and get her hands on the gold. It was right there for her and her best friend, Persia. Uh, but she couldn't get them. She couldn't rip the belt down. And uh, JC went up and grabbed her by her shorts and pulled her halfway back down the ladder, which allowed Gigi to run up the other side and get one of the belts free. And your new women's tag team champions, Toxic Attraction, JC Jane and Gigi Dolan. Yeah, so they, they're pulling... I don't know if you want to call it a new. They 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 they're all the team. The team angle. You got a three person group. They run the show. They they Same. own the NXT 2.0. Excuse me, women's. Now here's the big question. I don't know. If, you know, going off topic here for a second. This is NXT 2.0, right? So Champa's the only one pretty much now left from the old guard. Right, Mandy Rose is now 2.0. Uh, Mello Hayes is uh, 2.0. Tag titles. We'll get. We're gonna get to that next. That's a little bit. It's Roddy. Are they gonna get new belts? Like those those belts now just seem so out of place in that setting. <laughs> like I'm almost wanting like an NWO, but in like what like the N in like fluorescent green, the W in orange, and then the O in you know they, they get the NX, they can do something. They, there's got to be a war. There has to be a war coming out soon, right? And, you know they they did it in. The invasion. They did it, and they did it in WCW. It was the new breed, you know. It was it was the Billy Kidman, Sean Stasiak, whatever against yeah. the Hulk Hogan's and the Stings and you know, all the old guard. They did it in uh, the new ECW. That match culminated at WrestleMania 23. They gotta do something with that. With this, I would look forward to that. But John Smith, unfortunately, uh, just like your Jets broke up all most of our perfects uh, in the Eliminator pool. Uh, Imperium did the same to you as well. Uh, unfortunately, I don't. I don't think anybody saw this coming. Why give them back to Imperium? I guess was a question everybody had on their mind. Yeah, yeah. I don't know why, but you know what? I still consider it a perfect pay per view because nobody saw this coming. Not even Imperium saw this coming. Yeah. They were probably like, "Wait, are you serious?" When they were told that they were going to win this match, uh, you know, when, I, they, when, they, when their music hit, they were turning around. Are you sure? Are you sure? Yeah. They're, they're, they're talking to the guys in the back. Like, is, this a, is this a joke? <laughs> you ribbing me? Yeah, no, so we get a um, a lumberjack match. I forgot what the they called it, like a lumber scarecrow match. Who knows? <laughs> um, and about halfway through the match, after MSK goes flying over the top rope and causes a fight between all the lumberjacks, they all get ejected. <laughs> so then we just have a regular match from that point forward. Um, because a lumberjack match isn't no DQ, right? Yeah, so <laughs> we did the spin the wheel make a deal really didn't even come into play here. Not once did a lumberjack ever throw anybody back in the ring or attack anybody on the outside. It was kind of misplaced. They need to have lumberjack class over at the performance center, <laughs> you know. Um, but I mean, they, they didn't need to be a lumberjack match, maybe that's why it happened because you know, this match was. Spot after spot after spot, but everybody was selling correctly, which is what we're not used to when we see spot after spot after spot in other places. Yeah. So, um, you know, it, it, the way the match went, it seemed like MSK was going to win the whole time. And all of a sudden you just get that that forearm into the powerbomb double team finisher from Imperium that I always forget what it's called. And, uh, yeah, one, two, three, new champs. It was fun with with the, the lumberjacks. A lot of them in costume. Uh, some of them were pretty good. Some of them were. Pretty, I have to bring up the probably the scariest one out of all. I actually just put the picture. I almost forgot to put the picture up. I think he was dressed. I don't know if it was either the giant Gonzalez or Gangrel, but Von <laughs> Wagner just looked scary as hell. Um, he, was the, he was the elephant man. He was the oh, yeah, he, he, unbelievable. I'm not uh, animal. The the, the the lightless son of a Beverly, you know, he got me on that one. He so scary as hell. The best part is when somebody asked him, Well, what are you dressed up as? He goes, I'm Brad Pitt. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least he recognizes the fact that he's ugly as hell. <laughs> um, just fast forwarding the rest of the way, Malcolm Bivens, uh, he came out diamond diamond mind in an open challenge from anyone to challenge anyone in diamond mind. Here comes Odyssey Jones. <clears throat> I got excited because I wanted to see what these uh 
these Creed brothers could do. I want to see one of the Creed brothers just toss around uh, Odyssey Jones. Turns out he challenged Roddy. Obviously, it was not a title match. Uh, I guess insert jokes here. I, I, I didn't. I couldn't think of anything. It was you know four oh five live. We used that one already. So, um, uh, Roddy got the the win over Odyssey Jones um, after a distraction by the Creed brothers. Uh, so jumping knee again, better than Kenny Omega's by Roddy Strong for the win. Uh, they actually had a haunted house. We actually have a match uh, to pick here. We don't have a graphic for it. Uh, yes, we do. John Ryan Joy just on point. Uh, we have a match here. Coming up, it was a result of uh, this this haunted mansion at Dexter Lumens' house. I guess they didn't really decorate for Halloween. This is just how it looks. Uh, Johnny got in and fun. Home Alone, the crap out of the place. Absolutely <laughs> great line. Um, long story short, it was fun and games. I think, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Andre Chase got involved. He was fun. Uh, but Mello got his belt back uh, at, even at the end. They both all went uh, running away, scared like little girls. But we are going to have a tag team match. Uh, tonight, we're going to have uh, the North American champion, Carmelo Hayes, with his partner, Trick Williams, going against Johnny and Dexter. John Smith, as our senior NXT correspondent, who do you got? Um, I think they're going to want to see if Carmelo Hayes can pull another raw roll-up. So I got him pinning Johnny in an upset. I'm pinning Johnny? Wow. John DeConi. Uh I got Johnny and Loomis winning here. Uh, assu- you know, I'm sure it'll be Trick that gets pinned, but I assume it's then going to set up uh, someone – either Johnny or Loomis to face Mello for the uh, North American title. So give me uh, Loomis and Gargano. Yeah, I'm going to go Loomis and Gargano too, just because I think maybe like in the next big match, I think right now it's Johnny, right? Johnny wants the belt, if I'm remembering correctly. He wants his belt back. I don't think he's going to get it. I think Dexter's going to be one to get it. So I think we're going to go, you know, they're still going to get over on Trick and Mello, but then all of a sudden Mello is going to get one over on Johnny when it counts, which will cue Dexter to come in. So give me... Give me Johnny and Dexter uh, tonight. Uh, let's see. The LA Knight, uh, he he had the same – I wouldn't say it was the same costume. I think uh, Grayson Waller had a little bit – I believe it was a knockoff uh, of what LA Knight was wearing. It was the same exact costume. It's funny. But it was, <laughs> LA Knight was wearing it. The other one was a five-cent ripoff. Uh, but anyway, all of it led to the debut of Solo Sokoa. And God, does he have Uso written all over his forehead. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, I guess the quiche doesn't fall far from the tree in that family. <laughs> they, they all, they all, the quiche. He could, he could be Jane Jimmy's triplet, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Uh, but he made, he didn't have a match. We thought he was going to have a match. He was uh, slated to be there, but he was just supposed to show up and scare the hell out of everybody. So look for more for Solo Sokoa. Uh, also, Joe Gacy had a match. He defeated in action. Harlan appeared, uh, grabbed Gacy by the throat, but then, you know, he got talked back again. So it looks like uh, Harlan is actually going to be listening to Joe Gacy. More to come with that. Uh, we also have Cameron Grimes. He is going to be going to Swingers Palace. Oops. I mean, Duke's Poker Room. <laughs> and also, I guess Tony D'Angelo is going to be on Lashing Out with Lash. Legend, and we have one more match to pick. Speaking of, I guess it looks like maybe uh, Von Wagner is still wearing his Halloween costume. He's going to be tagging with Kyle O'Reilly going against Lidal Del Fantasma, John McConaughey. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think O'Reilly and uh, Wagner go over here before they eventually turn on each other. <laughs> yeah, John Smith, I, 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 this, I, Kyle O'Reilly, Kyle O'Reilly should actually just be untouchable at this point with this roster. Uh, I'm going to have to disagree with you there. I was never a Kyler O'Reilly guy. He didn't get over with me. But uh, I think Von Wagner like should beat him in a match one-on-one if they got if they got into the ring together. Um, I'll, I'll go with them to win this one because they're not going to start the tension between them just yet. Yeah, so I'll go with Kyler O'Reilly. So that will do it uh, for Halloween Havoc. Uh, before we go forward, though, John Smith, John Connie, if you could please just sit right there for one second. We're going to bring in um, our NXT UK correspondent, Gary Mahaffey. Gary, top of the evening to you, Melody. Good evening, sir. Good evening, Jets. Uh, the reason why I wanted to bring you on, John Smith, this is specifically a gift for you. <laughs> Here are our NXT standings after Halloween Havoc. Gary, yes, still in first place, but Gary, please explain yourself. <laughs> to be to be honest, 
I was I was just feeling sorry for John Smith. I mean, he's supposed to be the, the senior correspondent, and I was like 20 points clear, and I thought, at least if I make it look close, it'll not be too bad for him, do you know what I mean? So I purposely, I purposely threw all my picks. It's not that I was just crap. I just threw all my picks purposely just so that it would I would look nice, but I've been caught on being so generous. I mean, you know, you know how it is. So, Gary, you've been known for a lot of things, but yes, your generosity is yeah. is top notch. I'll give you that. Here I, are, I don't. Yeah, well, I don't need. I don't need your charity, you commie Scotsman. <laughs> <laughs> John the Connie, that's why we wanted to keep you on board, just so you can be a part of the little band. I know the two of them are going to get at it. Ryan yeah. Joyce still in the overall lead, even though him and John the Connie, yourself and Travis, all went one and three. Uh, I bet the, bet the ranch on Brom Breaker did not happen. I went two for two. I had Tommaso Ciampa, so I got uh, the extra five points. So John Smith was an uh, MSK victory away. Three title changes is a lot, though. In one, uh, three out of four title changes, that's a lot to predict. So, you know, shout out John Smith, but uh, that, that's a tough call right there. So uh, John Smith, John the Connie, we will bid you adieu for the time being. Go say hello to some loved ones, have some groceries. Do what you got to do. All right. Because right now, Gary, it's going to be me. It's going to be you. And a lot of the rumors going around last week that I've been off the air because uh, I was in mourning after Dion Perrazzo, uh lost her knockout championship at Bound for Glory. I was in mourning. I was in disarray. But then this past Thursday on NXT UK, Gary, the smile came back to my face. <laughs> no am dar got it done. <laughs> that that he did. He's brought it home. Exactly. Um, went in the Heritage Cup. And we did think, I mean, now, you, I mean, you and I had talked for a while, and we, and we said last week, Ryan and I said last week, it was like, I did think there would be something to do with Trent Seven. I thought he might... Um, they might he might turn heel, and actually, when I saw him standing with the towel, I mean, when I came to the last fall, when I saw him with the towel, I thought he was he was going to throw it in, and that would be the old Owen Hart, Bret Hart, yeah. like Helen Hart type thing. I thought, here we go. Now, obviously, it was more creative what they did, but it just adds a layer to it, and I still think that'll happen down the line. There'll be a split. Um, but it was it was a great match, and I think with Noam Dar having the title. As we've said before, you can imagine them next Supernova Sessions, there'll be a separate seat for the trophy just set beside him and so on. It's, it's going to be in a better position than where his guest is going to be. Unless his guests are pretty deadly. Now, pretty deadly was the one that caused this whole thing with the towels. So I'm, I'm hoping, you know, obviously Shaw's going to be there. He's going to have a nice seat. I would get pretty deadly some nice seats yeah. too here. But they could actually have... Champions, right? Yeah, they could actually have a Supernova Session where the guest is the Heritage Cup. <laughs> he just he's just, he's just interviewing it his first which would be great um but <laughs> but i say the the thing was i had seen and i'd said a couple of weeks ago i had seen that the spoilers and stuff were out and i purposely hadn't looked near them because i didn't want to know um and i'm glad for a lot of reasons in this episode i'm glad that i didn't i didn't see it um but i say they had they had a great match um and Dar taking it and say with pretty deadly coming out and um, the way that they did it with the, the creative way to get the towel thrown into the yeah. ring for the final fall um was great um but say it was, it was a good match so no, no, here's the funny thing so it's this creativity it's this these kind of matches the stories that have been going on in nxt uk was also what triple h was doing with nxt but apparently that just was not good enough so at least we still have this because I think with Hunter, Hunter and Sean at the helm, yeah, uh, and I guess Road Dogs involved in this too. It's just, it's just gold. They just, they just get it. And I guess Vince is just, yeah. oh sh hey Storm. Uh, we also cool. have it looks like uh, the family. Yeah, Storm. He's a big NXT. He's a big Gary fan. He misses you, pal. <laughs> um, Mark Coffee he and Rohan Raja. They went at it, but then I guess uh, it was more about the fireworks after the match with uh, Teal Man and, and the rest of Gallus. Yeah, I mean, it was, like we we had we had discussions. Obviously, we know that they've talked about extending the family and the new members or whatever coming in. And that's why I was, I was slightly surprised when I watched it that that Mark went over um, and that Mark won it. But as you said, there was the whole after play with the match and then 
the stuff backstage that, that's been happening with with Gallus and actually with um, Charlie Dempsey. And I, I had actually had figured that he might end up being the next member of the family, and he still might. Um, but where they keep inter- interrupting his promo time and stuff. But that yeah, and, was... and that's where I say think this is this whole thing stemming, I think, is going back to the Heritage Cup tournament because Wolfgang beat um Teal Man. Hmm. And and Teal Man doesn't seem like a guy who forgets easily. So now they got Mark Coffey and Rohan Ryan. Now, yes, Charlie Davis had a promo. He defeated Danny Jones, I guess, in action. Dine, uh, Danny Dimes, New York Giants quarterback. I know you don't get that joke, Gary, mm-hmm. but uh, the New York Giants quarterback's name is Danny Jones. Danny Dimes, they call him. He uh, he had the match with Charlie Dempsey. Dempsey got the win. So it looks like, yeah, that's the three-on-three three maybe uh, they're headed for. Yeah. yeah, and I have to say, I think Charlie Dempsey may be my new man crush as far as wrestlers go. Like the <laughs> matches he had, I just sit and watch them and go, Oh, this is so good. Um, this is brilliant. I absolutely love watching, like, it really is a throwback in style, and it allows Nigel McGuinness to mention a lot of the old 1970s and 80s world of sport wrestlers that, that even, I mean, Charlie's dad, obviously, William Regal would have grown up on yeah. um, and, and trained with. So it was abs- it's, it's brilliant. I love watching him. So we're going to go uh, from one favorite to, I, I guess, another, Gary, because um, Amal was uh, in action, okay? But yeah. you were going – yeah, I, I, I'm just saying what, what it is, okay? Because I want you to properly introduce her to us. Um, you were all over social media, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, whatever you can get your hands on. And she was on it too. She was saying, hey, I'm making my debut. So introduce us, Gary. Yeah, Myla Grace. This is why I was so glad I hadn't checked the spoilers. Um, because I saw a little while before NXT UK started, one of the NXT referees had had te- messaged out sort of what was on the show that night. And then I saw Myla Grace say, making my debut, I was like, no. Um Myla Grace, obviously a wrestler from Belfast, actually engaged to Tucker, um, they're from the original UK Championship tournament, mm-hmm. um, and he, she's trained with him and trained with other people. Literally, I've seen her from her first match, and I know them, and I, I like I've, I was texting them and so on. I, I know her, and I know Tucker well, and just absolutely brilliant to see somebody like that given a chance. She was given a chance to shine, and um, she's only a couple of years in. But she's taken a lot of time, um, has a big dance background and stuff, but has had a lot of time and has put herself out there and has gone to a lot of training things across Europe and so on. And it's brilliant to see her being given a chance. So I actually think, like when Aaliyah James started on on NXT UK, she appeared on and it was random matches and she lost a wee bit. But now she's been given a chance and I'm hoping that they do the same thing with Myla. She is really, really good. She's very athletic. And is a really lovely girl as well. And just to see her being given this opportunity is amazing. So honestly, everybody over here was just buzzing when they saw it. Good. And so, you know, I'm on board with it too, Gary. And she's okay with you. She's 100% okay with me. And for all of everybody, us uh, in the United States, there are two Tuckers in professional wrestling. <laughs> We're not talking about heavy machinery no, uh, with no. Otis Tucker. I, 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 I had that. There was a Tucker. <laughs> Exactly. If you go back to the original NXT uh, UK Championship tournament, there, you know, Tucker was uh, from from the United Kingdom uh, was in there. Uh, what happened with uh, Flash Morgan Webster Rampage Brown here, Gar? Yeah, I mean, I, I was surprised when you see some of the stuff um, that's going on. I mean, I I've been surprised that Flash Morgan Webster has been throwing the odd challenge out here, there, and everywhere. And you just knew when you walked in, you're like. Don't be so daft. Please yeah. don't, don't, don't challenge him. And you can see Rampage looking at the same thinking, don't try it. You can if you want, but please don't. <laughs> um, but no, but no, it'll be it'll be good. I can't see it, I can't see it ending well for Flash Morgan yeah. so when it does happen, yeah. mind you. But uh since Gala announced a three-way tag team match for uh, to determine the number one contenders, the pretty deadly. Is this match gonna be this Thursday, Gary? I know we have a championship match this Thursday. I feel like they're gonna hold this one off till next week. Um it's two weeks time. It's okay, the, gotcha. It's so that'll be it. It's gonna be Ashton, Ashton Carter, Oliver Smith, then we got Jack Stars and Dave Masses. I think that's is this our answer? I mean, I'm not gonna be on next week, so I'll give that as my answer. And symbiosis. We've had yeah. opportunity after opportunity already. It's not like symbiosis, you know, they need another crack here. 
Uh, I, I, I'm gonna go, you know, Jack and Massive. I, I, they might as well just send them all the way here. Yeah. I mean, Pretty Deadly's had a great run. You know, it's it's, and I know it's impossible to get titles off of the UK wrestlers. <laughs> so uh, if you know, it's not gonna shock me if Pretty Deadly wins. But I guess if it's not, and then we're now we're asking this question again. If it's not Jack and Wander, then who? You know, like it's. But no, I, I could see them going with Stars and Massive in that match in two weeks' time, just so that. Pretty deadly can have the routine and mocking master for what he looks like and mocking Jack Stars. Yeah, it uh, gives them a good bit of interplay, I think. So, yeah. no, I mean, Stars ain't the prettiest guy in the world either. So, <laughs> mock Stars too. Uh, but from what I am told, we actually do have uh, NXT UK Women's Championship match uh, this Thursday. And Gary, your nightmare is coming true. My so like, I know. This is, I, I, I'm happy I'm actually on to talk about this match. <laughs> Uh, this is your worst nightmare almost coming to fruition. We have about 48 hours. <laughs> um, are you nervous? What's going through your mind here? I mean, no. people I trust, I get it, but... I'm, I'm afraid to pick this match, given my given my history of the last week of how well I've picked matches, mind you. So <laughs> maybe, maybe I should pick Jenny, and then that way Mako will definitely win, I think, might be, the, might be the way for me to go. No, I mean, Jenny has stepped up, to be fair, and she has, she's done well, but I can't see her being the one to dethrone the final boss. I think we're still going to be heading um, another direction. I was going to say B Precy, obviously, but I was, who's, we've gone out of my head, but we're going to be heading that direction, I think. So, and I, th- I think you have to have the championship match with Miko and Amelia McKenzie as well. Mm. So yeah. Yeah. I, I think maybe Blair Davenport's end yeah. game here, but I yeah. think you have to have the Amelia match in here too. So with that, I'm going to go with, with Miko as well, but God, Gary, <laughs> <laughs> I, I will be watching Thursday. I have the day off. I got nothing to do. I will be able to watch UK live. <laughs> And I, I think see, I could I could imagine Mako going, it's okay, Jenny, lay it in, just get, hit me hard. And yeah. Jenny going, oh, please don't do it back. Please, please don't do it, yeah, exactly. please. <laughs> yeah, I don't think yeah. Jimmy, Jimmy can go the Japanese strong style. Right? <laughs> uh, Gary, uh, as always, we appreciate your time. We appreciate being a good sport with the over, uh, the, the squad do she put up, or I guess uh, you're the second person ever to do it. Now you're in the same company as Tyler, so... Uh, <laughs> We'll leave it at that, though. But, Gary, thank you so much for staying up late again. I appreciate it. It's no great problem. to see you. Uh, have a happy Thanksgiving. I don't know if there is Thanksgiving in Northern Ireland, but uh, I said I'm gone for the rest of the month, so I'll be back around the holidays. I'll have some Christmas lights up. It'll be a good time. Yeah, it'll, it'll, it'll not be the same without you. It'll be better. Oh, so, but yeah. <laughs> Gary, have a great night. You too. See you later. So we're going to bring back in John Smith. Going to bring back in John DeConi. Any chance... Uh, that Gary's his luck has been pretty bad as of late. Any shot that just because the wrestling gods are funny that Ginny wins this title on Thursday, John says. Uh, I'm gonna go with no, I don't think it's time for them to take it off for Miko yet. It is a severely tall order, John Nakani. That's exactly, yeah, yeah. I don't see it happening, but oh boy, the show it... next week if it does happen. I know exactly. It's like a, I'm there, happy I get to be like here for the precursor. I, if she wins, is there any like side feud that Miko has that somebody might, that might like screw her out of the title? She, she walked into the women's locker room and just be like, "Come and get it." She challenged everybody. Like she just told it all. So she's been getting. But the only one is the thing is she's only friends with one person, and that's why I was just talking about is Amelia McKenzie. She's gonna have that match with Amelia before it's all said and done. So. Um, we're going to go from NXT UK. We're going to travel back to past Friday night. And we're going to lay it, the smack of down on your Rudy Poo handy asses. John Smith. Oh, do I have this backwards? I have this backwards. Excuse me. Hold on. Let me flip this. John Connie. Uh, I guess the show started with Charlotte Flair in the ring saying she's the leader in the locker room. Sasha Banks said, girl, uh-uh. What, is this... No, she's gone, right? I can't even do that now. Uh, Charlotte thinks, uh, thinks it's time to fight a new challenger, and here comes Shotzi. Yeah, some lunatic with green hair and a tank said, well, you know, the new face you're looking for is right here, baby. So we have ourselves a championship contenders match. We all love those. And uh, 
Charlotte versus Shotzi. And Sasha hung around. Very magnanimous of her to stick around and watch these two. And, of course, she would eventually get up on the apron. And Shotzi, whose timing was a little off, eventually almost ran into her but really didn't run into her. And that little distraction would allow Charlotte to, you know, stick a forearm shiver in Shotzi's face and hit natural selection for the one, two, three. So Charlotte doesn't have to worry about facing Shotzi, at least not immediately for the actual title. But then Shotzi got a little bit ticked off at Sasha. She, I guess, blamed her for the loss. She went a little bit goofy. She attacked Sasha, rolled her out, bounced her off the tank, rolled her back in. Hit that uh, jumping senton from the top buckle, and I guess we officially have a heel. So now in this little triumvirate of people circling the SmackDown Women's title, we have three heels. So I don't, yeah, dude, I don't know if that's – is that a heel move? I, I don't figure she's the one when – yeah. when, it's, when it's done to a heel, doesn't necessarily yeah. make it a heel move. Is she getting know. booed? That I can't quite remember. I do uh, – you know – she might have been getting a yet. <laughs> <laughs> I missed the Thunderdome. Oh my god, I was watching something with my stepdaughter. I was something I was watching I was in the kitchen. My stepdaughter was watching something. And Tina Turner's Thunderdome came on whatever for whatever reason. I'm like, ah oh, man, I missed the Thunderdome. <laughs> uh, Said King no Woods. one ever. Yeah, yeah, no, right. So, well, I was singing Thunderdome when they first announced it. I remember it was a SummerSlam special. I was I think I started the SummerSlam special two years ago singing Thunderdome. Uh, King Woods was in the ring for the knighting ceremony of Kofi Kingston, who now knelt as Kofi and rised as Sir Kofi Kingston, the hand of the king. Uh, and then here come the Usos. John the <laughs> and the Usos. You know what? Some feuds never die. I'm, I'm just, just let these four and even so biggie, whatever, let these five just go forever. Like this feud belongs in the hall. They should actually have like Hall of Fame feuds. Yeah, yeah, like the, like the UFC does. So put it, put a particular match or feud. Yeah, in a, in a yeah, give it some recognition. Yeah, so the Usos came out to remind uh, Kofi and Woods that uh, they the ones, and blah blah blah, a little back and forth, and the King declared a trial by combat for later in the evening, and then Jimmy punched Kofi in the face, and they ran away, and fast forward to the main event, we get. Woods and Kofi versus the Usos in a non-title match. Uh, Woods would eventually make the blind tag. Uh, and then following that, when Jimmy hit a super kick on Kofi and went for a cover, he wasn't covering the right man. Woods came in and basically hit the Lamahi Strahl cradle without the without grabbing the arm. Just kind of like rolled over uh, Jimmy and rolled him up for the one, two, three. And the king and the hand celebrated in the ring to end the show. John Smith, I'm reading the notes here. Um, <clears throat> Matt Cat Moss, Riddick Moss scored. I know you're a football guy, so you know exactly what I'm talking about here. Uh, Riddick Moss scored a seven on the Wonderlick test. A seven? A seven. Isn't the, the best like score of 50? Scoring. Like, that's like Jamarcus Russell level of, like, Wonderlick test scoring. Yeah. Wow. I didn't even – why was he taking the Wonderlick test? He He's was a full guy. He, isn't that just for quarterbacks, though? No, nah, the quarterbacks are the ones that they expect to score highest on it. Yeah. But, uh, oh, okay. They, they just want to make sure who the morons are and who, like, who they know they can trust to actually, like, run things. I got you. James Miller well, going happy. Corbin's eventually going to be the Intercontinental Champion here. And I kind of feel like that's where it's going right now. See, like, uh, Corbin and Moss, uh, not to mention knocking it out of the park with the jokes, just seems to be getting the upper hand here. <laughs> yeah, so we got a, a trick or street fight, which um, – you know, basically just means there's a bunch of pumpkins all around. And kudos to whoever had to make all these jack-o'-lanterns because they every single one of them was different. And they, they had like one of them had a logo in it and stuff. So, you know, they probably don't get any recognition. So because all their stuff was just getting getting smashed all over each other all match. You know, they were getting pump, pumpkins on heads and whipped into other people. We got um Madcap Moss getting dunked into a vat of of water with apples in it, and then Boogs and Nakamura and Pat McAfee all cheers an apple, which was weird. <laughs> as we went to commercial break, um, at one point Reggie made his way in, 
and out with everybody chasing him for his 24 seven title. Um, what else happened? Uh, Oh, yeah, and then we get two masked guys when Boogs gets to the second rope to do a, a high-flying maneuver. Two masked guys hit him in the back with kendo sticks. He falls down. He gets neck breakered onto a jack-o'-lantern for the one, two, three, and the two masked men reveal them to be Humberto Carrillo and Humberto Carrillo. <laughs> Humberto Carrillo and Humberto Garza. <laughs> Cousins with the same name. I love it. I thought they had the same first and last name. No, no, no. Just, uh, no, I think I think Umberto Carrillo, that's his real name, but Angel's real name is, is Umberto as well. It's Umberto Garza. It's good to see them doing I said, I like those two. I mean, I, we both, we, God, we killed Umberto Carrillo over the years for being the worst friend ever, but that never took anything away from what his ending ability, you know? like. Yeah. I just find it curious <laughs> if they stuck them together with no explanation when they, they had like a – like a family blood feud yeah. a couple of years ago. You know, two good looking guys like them. I guess they just attract to each other, right? And then they go out and hand out roses and whatnot. <laughs> Shayna See, Baszler defeated Naomi. Uh, Sonya Deville was the referee in this match. Uh, still a thorn in Naomi's side. Did the quick count. Uh, shout out to Shayna Baszler. Rolled up somebody else for once. Good job. Yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, and it took a quick count to get it done, too. So maybe she would have kicked out of two. Who knows? <laughs> um, but uh, then when she got in uh, Sonya Deville's face about the quick count, uh, Shayna Baszler hit the Caribou to clutch on uh, Naomi, put it to sleep for this match. So to be continued with Naomi, uh, along with Sonya and Shayna, those are, that's a dangerous, dangerous combination. Uh, not to mention one being a Jersey girl. So. Uh, then the last match we saw, we had Drew McIntyre defeated Mustafa Ali with, uh, by submission with the Kimura. Uh, afterwards, Mustafa Ali grabbed the mic, believes that people choose not to root for him because his name is Mustafa Ali. Oh, so, Jesus. same old story with him for the past four years, correct? Yep, coming back around to it. Yep. All right, so about last night, uh, transitioning, smooth transition from SmackDown to to Raw, and I know as, as, as we'll just do the, the transition here. That I asked this in pre-production because I've been a little under a rock, and there's been no mention of anything about the Survivor Series. There's been no graphics. There's no mention of the Barclays Center other than what happened at Crown Jewel uh, when they made the announcement. So, do you think we're still doing this whole Champions versus Champions things? Are we going to shy away from it? Any uh, questions, comments, or concerns, John Smith? Um, I have no reason to think that they're not going to do the champions versus champions. I find it curious that they haven't said anything yet, though. So, I mean, it's totally possible. But I, if they don't, then what? what's the gimmick for Survivor Series then? Exactly. John Connor, yeah, John Connor, you agree with that? Yeah, exactly. I mean, we, you know, we had Becky mention it. You know, whoever comes out of it's got to fit, you know, with that, uh, the other title match, you're going to have to face me at Survivor Series. We had the Usos warned. Uh, someone that you know, whoever I guess Drew and Big E, that whoever wins is eventually gonna have to face Roman in Survivor Series. So I assume that's where we're still headed. Uh, it's just just odd that there's been really nothing going on. Uh, and three more months, Mount Rushmore. Uh, Jan, I think you gotta be more specific here. Uh, is this, I guess, was somebody quote? They're in quotes, so maybe somebody said it. Uh, uh, oh, yeah, somebody there. said, uh. Who was it? Someone is pushing for Mount Rushmore status. I, I don't remember the reference, though. I apologize. Yeah, that's works. not how any of this works. <laughs> uh, it's like it's trying to it's like trying to push to be king of the ring for forever, you know? Yeah, exactly. Eventually. <laughs> glad, I'm, glad, I'm glad Xavier's enjoying it as much as he has been. It's, it's just fun. It's, it's, I'm sure he's not even in character. He's just genuine right now, and it's just yeah. like this is the dream that he's been wanting. So good for him. Shout out to him. Seth Rollins, uh, he was out on, last night on Raw. He counted, I guess he has the contract that basically guaranteed him to be the next WWE champion. Um, Big E said, like, all right, let's do this now. Rollins said, nah, not right now. So Kevin Owens comes out, John Connie. Yeah, there, there were some, uh, some light references to, you know, Becky and Sasha being the face of uh, Raw and then, you know, Big E and, uh, Seth being the face of Raw. And uh, KO came out and basically said, like, well, I want to be on the list, too, because, you know, whenever, whenever I do what I do, I make people remember, you know, last week we had that ladder match. I didn't win it, 
But what was everybody talking about afterwards? They were talking about my performance. I I could be the face of Monday Night Raw. So if you're not going to face him, get out of the ring, Seth. I'll take on Big E for the first time ever tonight. So then Seth would find KO later backstage. She offered a little quid pro quo. I'll help you out tonight if you promise to help me out somewhere. Three more months. But yeah, there you go. The name of mm. Oh, yeah. right, right. There you go. Thank you, James Wheeler. Appreciate you, buddy. Yeah, well, Kevin Owens needs to stay. Yeah. Why, why get lost in the shuffle in AEW? Anywho. Uh, so, yeah, so uh, Seth was backstage talking to Kevin. Kevin wanted nothing to do with him. Told him, you know, basically to bug off. So our main event is Big E versus Kevin Owens. Seth comes out. He takes a seat near commentary. A later, uh, later on, he would sucker punch E when E was kind of like hanging halfway out of the out of the ring behind the ref's back. Uh, and Owens, you know, afterwards he kind of played it off like oh, I didn't know, I didn't see anything, but he saw exactly what happened, and he just kind of laid back into a pin, which allowed Big E to you know grab his uh, his shoulders and roll him over into a crucifix and get the one two three. And afterwards, Big E was calling him out, you know, like, you know, Kevin, you just got through telling us, you know, you're not, you're nothing like this guy. And, you know, you took advantage of the situation. You saw what he did. You knew exactly what happened. Okay. I was like, I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, Seth, this is all your fault. This is your fault, Seth. And I'm going to face you. You and I should face next week and blah, 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 blah. Big E was not buying any of it. Kind of hinted at a KO heel turn. You know, like if this is his last run, we're going to get some uh, heel Kevin Owens before he goes. And Biggie uh, would scoop him up and hit a big ending as the show went off the air and had some choice words off mic, albeit uh, for Rollins, who was halfway up the ramp and still smiling in his jack o' lantern suit. <laughs> uh, smooth transition from Seth Rollins to big time Bex, who defended her championship in the opening match, John DeConi, saying that Bianca Belair does not appreciate her. And, and the and the fans, how dare they boo? She even broke out the old Daniel Bryanism of their fickle. <laughs> we got a little bit of that in the uh, in the gorilla uh, gorilla position uh, interview. It's fun with the Irish accent too. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Bian- Bianca would eventually get. Uh, bad. Uh, this match went almost twenty freaking minutes. There were two, <laughs> <laughs> three segments, two commercial breaks. All for it to end with uh, Bianca getting Becky up on her shoulders, getting ready for the KOD. First, Bex is holding on to the top rope because she doesn't want to get pulled out of that corner because she knows what's coming next, the finish to the KOD. And then just her last bit of grip as she gets pulled away from the corner, she rips the turnbuckle pad off. The referee plainly saw it as he watched it, the turnbuckle pad hit the ground, and Becky kind of used that to that extra time where everyone was confused for like a split second. She wiggled out of the KOD and immediately ran Bianca face first into the metal turnbuckle ring. Uh, and that would uh, then allow her to roll her up with a handful of tights. One, two, three, and Becky retains. It's fun. When, you know, it, it, it's like if you're in another sport, like I always say accidents are still penalties too. Like now, like you, you rip the turnbuckle off. It's not a disqualification. It was an accident. And then you just happen to push her into it. Hey, that's just the circumstance. I'm, I didn't see that. It was, I don't know. That's it. <laughs> uh, who we got here? New Year, uh, James Wheeler wants a prediction for uh, day one. She wants Becky Lynch and Liv Morgan. I wouldn't mind that at all. What's the obsession with Liv Morgan all of a sudden? She's Jersey. just whatever, though. Like She's not that good. <laughs> she's not that good. She's, she's just a guy. She's just a girl, you know? Like. Uh, John Smith, one of our favorites, T Bar. T Bar, non title, no DQ match against the United States champion. Yeah, what what a fight that was! It was akin to uh Sheamus versus Drew McIntyre about this time last year. Um, they just beat the crap out of each other. We got Damian Priest caught up in the ropes and getting smashed in the in the midsection with with a kendo stick over and over and over again i think he was actually bleeding at one point um you know they just kept going at it and fighting and fighting and eventually we got um 
priest with his finisher. I forget what he calls it. Um, reckoning. The reckoning. I believe onto a chair. Maybe not. He smashed the crap out of him with a chair about thirty times to begin with, though. So, um, good showing by by T Bar, though. Hopefully, he's able to kind of shed the whole gimmick of I of what was their name again? I forgot already. Retribution. Yeah, yeah Retribution. So. They said that was, they got split up in the draft. Mace and T Bar. Um, like I said, we know you know Mace was kind of you know held the Shawn Michaels of the team, but T Bar, I think. <laughs> Dominic Dijakovic can go. He proved it in NXT. So I, I, I'm, just, I'm just exactly just hope that they if they just use him and let him shine in these types of matches, even if his name is T Bar. He's actually way better now than he ever was in NXT. Yeah, it was more about like Keith Lee, and then he kind of was able to ride Keith Lee's coattails. That's fair. What do we got? Speaking of Keith Lee, add Keith Lee to the mix. We got the U.S. Triple Match, uh, Triple Threat Match that would really. Bring out some nostalgia from MXT Mint to win. That it would, and then just throw Karrion Cross in there too, because he was the one that uh, Rocky poured the hell out of Dominic Dijakovic. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he beat Priest too. I would think so. In his first match back after his injury, I think he beat Priest at a pay per view at a takeover. Sounds about right. Sounds right. Um, the new Queen of the Rings, Elena and Carmella, they defeated the Rhea Ripley. There, there we go. So we're picking up right where we left off with the WWE Women's Tag Team Championships. <laughs> we thought maybe if you got the belt off of Natty and Tamina that whoever was champions would win matches. Uh, it looks like we're just, you know, old hat with this. Uh, Elena and Carmella got to win over the champions. Carmella distracts Nick. Yeah, Shalina jumps on Nikki's back and delivers the code red for the win. So uh, we're back on this bandwagon again. <laughs> Finn Balor defeated Chad Gable. Uh, let's see, uh, Balor climbs with the uh, do, do, do. Uh, Balor just superplex, but Balor hooks Gable's win uh, legs to hold on for the win. John Smith, you wanted uh, Dolph Ziggler. I think a couple weeks off, and Dolph Ziggler starts winning again. I like this. Yeah, but it wasn't really much about the win here. It was more well that we started backstage with Riddle and the and the Dirty Dogs, and Riddle's wondering if the uh, if the Dirty Dogs ever play rough, rough pass. Then um, RK Bro comes out to brand new music, and they're they're sitting ringside on commentary. Uh, we get your standard like match one in the playbook of WWE's tag team matches, where you know the. the you know, the faces start off strong, then one guy gets beaten up for five minutes, and then we get the hot tag to uh, to Montez. And when he's about to get up on the top rope to hit his splash, Omos comes out and um, distracts him. We get some move by Dolph because it, wasn't, it didn't end up on camera. I'm assuming it was a super kick. And uh, we get the one, two, three from that. Then um, the Street Profits both try to attack Omas and just get disposed of quickly. Then Riddle comes over and gets pressed and press slammed onto the second hardest part of the ring, the edge of the apron. And then uh, we end the segment with Orton and Omas screaming at each other. And it seemed like they were about to go at it. And then they just cut to a clip of Priest and T-Bar from last week. <laughs> Bad production during that segment. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh... John Smith, Austin Fury defeated uh, Rey Mysterio um, as a former believer in the way. How is Austin doing right now on the main roster? Is he doing okay? It sounds like his name's coming up every week. He's getting a lot of selfies. Uh, is this working for you? He's doing incredible, man. He's with, like, the perfect person to, to work with, and, you know, I love it. Everything he does is just seems so natural. It seems like it's just him having a good time, and I, and I love it. And John Lacani, I believe you had a bold prediction yesterday morning on the Daily Wrestling News Show about Austin Theory. Yes, we were we were asked for some wild predictions, and my prediction is that by the end of 2022 calendar year, Austin Theory will be your WWE champion. Okay. Wow. I could see it happening. He could win money in the bank. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Uh, Reggie was backstage with John Morrison. Morrison is very close to achieving his meditation goal. Our truth and Zawa attack Reggie. Reggie escapes again. Our truth and Zawa blame each other, and then they blame Drake Maverick. So we're still having funny games in the twenty four seven division. 
So we have had uh, we're gonna transition from WWE. I think we're done with all our WWE stuff for the time being. We're gonna transition to I believe this was the first Impact uh, after Bound for Glory. Um, I know you guys probably talked about it uh, at length last week. I mean, it was a major show. Uh, I'm sure you talked about it at length. Uh, <laughs> uh, that's right. You let off with yeah. Gary. You let off with Gary. There you go. 45 minutes of Gary, right? Uh, <laughs> get the numbers well, up. Overall. Yeah, ratings don't lie though. You can't you can't not do that now. Your know, ratings don't lie. You just about the show with Gary. You get, you get, there you go. And then we put him on second today to keep them on even longer because they were just tuning out the second Gary was done. So now they had to wait for him a little bit. That's you got to tease him. You got to tease him with the Gary. There you go. Yeah, eventually we'll just make him stay up all night and he's the main event every show. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm dead tired, but damn, the views are unbelievable. <laughs> uh, thoughts on Bound for Glory, real quick, John the Connie. Uh, I thought it was a great show. I believe we all got it. I mean, I got my ass kicked in it, but um, I, I thought that was an absolutely great show. Uh, and that was you know, top notch performance. Right? Everybody in the freaking demon back. We'll get into the demon in a little bit, I guess. Yeah, yeah. He, uh, I mean, he was one of the surprises. It wasn't one of the surprises that made you go, like, oh my God, I can't, you know, Rocky Romero. Uh, showing up for the gauntlet was like, hey, now that's a hell of a surprise. The yeah. demon shows up and you're like, wow. They just, they just, they just did that. Huh? <laughs> but yeah, um, always a good show. I mean, you know, always the, the ring work is always, you know, borderline sensational. <laughs> and, uh, and I could have saw it. John Smith, I'm pretty sure Impact did not sign the demon. So could we get a demon sighting in the Royal Rumble in January? I guess it's a big question. Uh, who the hell's the demon? Oh, the kiss demon. Yeah, the kiss oh, demon. I'm like, I hear the demon, I think Finn Balor. I'm like, what no, are you guys was, talking about? Yeah, no, Finn that Balor was ripped off somebody for that. Yeah, no, definitely not. I, I hope I never see him again. That was the first time I've ever seen him live. Yes, <laughs> really. Uh, let's see what we got. Uh, Adam Shear, uh, Braun Strowman signs with Impact Wrestling, moves first Titan. With, I guess he's going by the name Titan. That'd be pretty cool. All right. Hell yeah. Wasn't that Big Show's name when he first came to WWF? No, he was just Paul White. He just went by Paul White. I feel like it was Titan first. I'm going to look into that. Okay, go for it. Uh, meanwhile, I mean, there was a lot of surprises that Bound for Glory. They're probably the most important, probably in wrestling history. It was the inspiration uh, joining Impact Wrestling and in the opening contest of Bound for Glory in their opening debut match. Uh, they win the Knockouts Tag Team Championships. Defeating Decay, so now they won the championships at Bound for Glory. They won the championships at WrestleMania. Uh, uh, Mount Rushmore, you know, throw them up there. That's it. You just need two, right? There you go. Um, I guess they had a backstage uh, interview with uh, with Gia. We're here to inspire people, hence the name. I believe John DeConnie, your quote is, go figure. Yeah. <laughs> but John DeConnie, in all seriousness, the main event, Ace Austin, Chris Saban, uh, 17 minutes, 50 seconds. Uh, you know, you joke. Or I joke. I specifically joke around about Dave Meltzer's star system, but um, this had to be at least twenty. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, this. like this was everything. When you you say Ace Austin and Chris Saban, and you think of how good this match could be, this match was a little bit better. And it, it's almost a shame that it ended with uh, you know Fulton kind of yanking Saban throat first into the ropes to kind of like. Uh, knock him off his equilibrium and then ace hits the fold and gets the one two three but yeah these two really tore it up and uh you know if you find yourself with an extra 20 minutes give this match a view because it's absolutely worth it oh, 100 like you couldn't have put that app out for glory they understand you know a lot of the matches take up a lot of time they want to give everyone the time to shine but like you couldn't put this you couldn't <laughs> find a way to put this you couldn't tell you make the gauntlet a 10 person gauntlet tell the demon to take the night off so fucking chris <laughs> saban and you know <laughs> <laughs> he's also he's gonna tear it down for a 20 star match anyway uh the new x division champion trey miguel he defeated rocky romero to retain the x division championship after a top buckle meaty aura probably the meatiest of all auras i do believe we actually have a match to pick your boys there's no matches on raw or smackdown the pick i do believe we have a fatal four-way to determine the next number one contender uh, for the X Division Championship. So we actually have Rohit Raju, we have Macklin, we have Black Taurus, and the Laredo Kid, who's just continuing to stick around for whatever reason. I don't think he's an impact. I, mean, I guess Black Taurus really isn't either, but um, 
Who do you got? You got Rohit Macklin? Is this are we going back to Macklin here? We were all on Macklin. I know a couple people were on uh Tra I think Travis had Trey Miguel. Travis did pretty good at Bound for Glory. Travis, I believe, had Trey. But we were all on the Macklin train, as far as I can remember, for Bound for Glory. So uh you're gonna hop back on that bad boy, John McConney? Yeah, uh, Macklin came out after the Trey and Romero uh, match and uh, tied Trey up to the Tree of Woe and just, I mean, charged and sunk his shoulder into him while he was hanging upside down. So those two uh, going at it for the X Division title seems like uh, the, the, the likeliest of outcomes. John Smith. Um, I'm going to go with Rohit on this one, actually. Awesome. Um, not, not because, uh, Macklin shouldn't win, but because I think they're not ready to hang another loss on him. And if, if he goes up against Trey Miguel one-on-one, -on -one, he's going to have to actually get pinned. So, cause I don't think they're going to take the belt off of Trey yet is where I'm getting. Yeah. So I think uh, Macklin should be the next one to win it, but I don't know if it's going to be like this right now. I don't know. All right. Well, uh, Steve Macklin is actually the boyfriend of the Queen here, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna ruin the the theme of my show today. Uh, the, you know, my personal and uh, getting my Deanna Peraza autograph picture. Yeah, there's no gonna, points on the line anyway. Yeah, there's no points on the line, but I'm not gonna bet against Macklin on uh, the day I had my Deanna Peraza photo. Uh, Rachel Ellering defeated Tasha Steeles with a backslide for the win, and then we had. Only four matches on Impact. Uh, we had what sounds like a complete and utter brawl between Heath and Joe Doring, John Smith. Yeah, this match barely got a chance to get off the ground, though, because, you know, we get a few minutes in and uh, Diener gets involved. Get, um, he, like, trips D uh, Heath from the outside. Then Rhino starts fighting with Diener, and then they're all over the place. They end up in the ring. We get a no contest because of it. Then we get Violent by Design attacking three on two on Heath and Rhino, your first ever SmackDown Tag Team Champions. Don't forget to to, to point that out. <laughs> He's got kids. Yeah, the, the cheese was on like it's all team. <laughs> yes, cheese was. Yeah, that was their celebration, right? Uh, and uh, yeah, so then Heath takes a pile driver from Eric Young and. That's where we are. So it looks like we're going to go for a while with this feud. Yeah. Well, I think I would hope it would have to because Eric Young looks like it's, he's cleared. If he's he's throwing out pile drivers, he's ready to roll. So him versus uh, Rhino one on one would be unbelievable. Nice. Unbelievable. I'm here for that. Uh, Mickey James came to the ring. She thanked Deanna for a match of her life. She knows Deanna has a rematch. But no one has seen her since Bound for Glory. Uh, I decided to pop in today because I'm happy I got the autograph picture. And, you know, Noam Dar won the UK champions, the Heritage Cup. So I'll, I'll pop in. I'm smiling again. Yeah, I don't get it back. It's fine. We're good. Three time. You got to change that to a three time, though. Um, so here comes Madison Rain. And it looks like we're heading for Madison Rain to challenge Mickey James for the Impact Knockout Championship. Uh, I believe Caleb got involved. He had some words for Mickey. She slapped the taste out of his mouth. Um, John Smith, Madison Rain, we go. She's a former knockout champion, right? She's a former champ. Ah, uh, yeah, no, no way. She's not winning this. Yeah, I'm, I can't. I can't. You can't beat Deanna Perazzo and then lose to Madison Rain, and that's not a shot at Madison Rain. But that's just unless Deanna just gets involved out of spite and costs yeah. her the title. But and then we get a feud between them two, and but that's not for the title. John the Connie. Yeah, I got uh, Mickey holding on over Madison. Uh, whether or not she does when Mercedes Martinez comes around because she's got a title shot in her back pocket. That I'm not sure of. Uh, Hard to Kill is in January. That's their next big show. So we have we have Turning Point Survivor Series weekend. That's a Saturday, but the 20th. Right. Not sure when their December show is, but can we hold off? Can we go, Mickey? Can we deal with Mickey James? I guess until Deanna gets up and can we want to go January? You want to get it done right away here? Like I don't know. Where are we going to go? Uh, then we have our new World Impact Champion, 
Uh, shocked the world, cashing in his uh, uh, Bound for Glory trophy, I guess, right away. Yeah. Oh, wait, didn't time pulling a full Kane here, right? That was, that was Kane that did it. Kane and uh, Dean Ambrose. Dean Ambrose, yeah. And Alexa Bliss, too. She did it, too. No patience. Uh, Moose is in the ring. Here comes Eddie Edwards. Uh, it, it just turned into a complete cluster bleep. And now we have Minoru Suzuki involved. <laughs> and now this is like, okay, so we actually have a six-man tag team match. That team on the left should be unbeatable, in my opinion. That is a bad, bad team. And I I know Josh Alexander has that super heel, uh, super face in him now. Uh, Eddie Edwards is the heart and the soul and whatever. And then Cardona is Matt Cardona. Uh, he's different in impact than he is in GCW, so we're not talking about the biggest, you know, D hole of all time in that Matt Cardona. But Mizoro Suzuki, Moose, and W Morrissey on the same team, John McConney, I just cannot pick against that. No, exactly. I, you know, I assume it's going to be uh, Cardona to take the pinfall. I, Eddie could as well. I, I don't see Josh taking it, but yeah, I, I, I definitely don't see the good guys win it. John Smith. Yeah, I got. I got the the heels winning this one too, and uh, Moose and Morrissey look like they're straight out of Beavis and Butthead world in that in that graphic that you just showed us. It's like <laughs> ridiculous. Uh, so that will do it uh, for Impact. They said they're on their way to Turning Point in in three weeks. Uh, we will give you guys one last break before we bring you back in to AEW. Peace. We're gonna break. We're going to bring in the guy that has been saving my ass the past three weeks, will continue to save my ass the next three weeks. From minutes to bell time, uh, dot com, Ryan Joy. Yeah, I'm talking about you, buddy. Uh, I appreciate your help, as always. You know, I, I tell you backstage, I'll tell you over the phone, I'll do it on air as well. Uh, thank you for taking the time to take the wheel for me when uh, I came. I have a busy, busy man getting together a new arena. It's not a simple process. So you had work. Um, how are things you with you? Everything going okay? Yeah, things are <clears throat> things are really, really good. We're having uh, really good episodes of the Daily Wrestling News Show all week, uh, where people are talking about their hopes for wrestling and stuff. So. Uh, Things are very good. Um, now you just put that graphic up in the corner, yeah, though. That I was know, like, <laughs> like wait, this, take was the... what, uh, this was what the uh, the Body Slam Brigade was about, I believe, last week, right? Plus, I know you did a huge show on it. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is this stuff. is uh, this. Uh, you kind of sucked the air out of it. I was kind of upbeat and everything. You throw the little graphic yeah. up there in the corner. Well, you kind of just sucked the air out of the room. Ring of Honor announced last week that uh, that they're basically letting everybody go out, letting everybody out of their contracts. And after Final Battle, which is their December pay-per-view, they're putting the whole company on pause until April. Uh, and then when they come back on April, at April, it does not appear that they'll have anybody under contract. It'll just be kind of like an indie show. Whoever's available, they'll bring in. And my assumption is they're going to be running a show WrestleMania weekend from in Dallas area. They typically do Super Card of Honor. Uh, so, you know, there's good and bad here. The The... Good news is that if you're a fan of Ring of Honor and the talent that they have, well, that talent could show up anywhere now. You know, they could be on. Uh, we already saw the Briscoes on GCW. We could see, you know, any of them appearing. The Briscoes and FTR are having a Twitter exchange right now. So maybe yeah. you have a match there. Yeah. Um, but there's a lot of really good talent there that's going to be hitting the market, which is going to make it for the independent talents hard for the independent talents already on the market. But um, so there's that, uh, and those people could potentially build their names, uh, and then when Ring of Honor starts running shows again, those shows might be higher profile because that talent's yeah. been out there and working. So, um, you know, you can choose to take a look at it any way you like. There's definitely ups and downs to the situation. There's talk. Uh, there's talk, not talk coming from Ring of Honor, but there's, you know, obviously when they made this announcement, everybody started talking like, well, are they going out of business for good? Are they going to sell off the tape library and stuff like that? Well, the reality is that, you know, Sinclair, you know, sounds like they really love Ring of Honor and they want to keep it. And this was how they were going to move forward with the strategy. But at the same time, they've made it really attractive to sell because they've gotten rid of all the liabilities mm -hmm. and 
you know, what is there to, what is there to sell with the tape library? Now, if somebody comes in and offers them a bunch of money, maybe they just do it. It's, they don't have people to worry about anymore because they've sold it off. So, or they've released everybody. So, yeah, uh, so, I know a lot of, a lot of big names coming, uh, a couple that come to mind, uh, Jersey Jay Lethal, always the first person on my mind when you say Ring of Honor. You say Ring of Honor, I say Jay Lethal. I know EC3 is down there. I know Gresham is down there, and he's got connections to Impact with his – I don't know if they're, they're married. They're married, right? Him and Jordan, right? Uh, yes, they are. Uh, yeah. So he's got connections there. Uh, and then the Briscoes, like I said, they've been lifers in Ring of Honor. Um I don't know where I would want. I know Vince already said he's got no interest in this. I I, I would say you got to put him in AEW. That there's that's just where they would shine. Like the Briscoes would shine. You I know, know I would love to see the Briscoes versus FTR. The Briscoes versus yeah. the. I mean, we've seen the Briscoes versus the Bucks Bucks a thousand times, but you know FTR is a team. Uh, also, you know everybody kind of always looks past the New Day and the Usos. <laughs> like those are teams I'd love to see them go up oh, against yeah. too, but. I, like you mentioned, I don't, I don't, I think Vince would take a pass on them. Um, Not with his new philosophy. If he sticks by his new philosophy with with amateur athletes and former football players yeah. and bodybuilding, yeah, no, no, nobody from Ring of Honor is doing it. Yeah, no uh, chicken farmers from Delaware that are above forty. Yeah. And then <laughs> the the one person, if anybody, like I said, just like Braun Strowman, Braun Strowman it will be, he's going to fit in perfect at Impact. I believe the inspiration is going to fit in perfect for Impact. Dalton Castle is made for Impact Wrestling. He is. He needs to get there. Yep. You know he's on the he's on the kind of the backswing, backswing, the forswing. I probably shouldn't use a golf analogy. Back he's nine. on the back half of his back career nine. for sure. Yeah. The back nine of his career. Yeah, yeah, the back nine. That'll that'll work. Yeah, yeah. I was trying to talk about the swing, but I've you know the back swing is kind of the beginning of the whatever yeah and then he dried the force so yeah it would be the yeah, yeah. The so he so he's kind of at the tail end of his career so um he would be great at impact though i mean gosh can you imagine him in swingers palace and stuff yes like that. oh my he god yes right exactly. like it was just, he, his character would fit perfectly there anything yeah. would do. i thought that Colton was great i mean you we mentioned the big names so far but you also got roosh and dragon lee and bandito yeah. all those all those like really top-notch luchadores flamita and ray horace Flip Gordon, a super, super well um, respected athletes in Ring of Honor. And then they have a the people that they have sort of on their undercard on their come up, though though some of them are really, really good, talented. Um, when you got Josh Woods and and Brian Johnson and and then Dak Draper, and then on the women's division, they just started with that. Just started yeah. building that yeah, up. And they, they kind of gave a, a place for those people to come and work and then the the place disappeared, but they started to build their names. So hopefully they can kind of take that and, and go forward. We didn't mention Shane Taylor. There's lots and lots and lots of potential coming from Ring of Honor. And like I mentioned before, if they do go under this model where they can just put together a show with who's available, that means they can start pulling in all the free agents. Mm -hmm. You know, they could pull in a Braun Strowman because they don't have – these huge contracts that they're paying, they can afford some of the big names for single night appearances type of thing. So you know, James yeah. Wheels reported that Braun Strowman's off the market. So I, I don't know if this is. It's... Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I, th <laughs> I think there was an, I think there was an if there, but <laughs> I, I think James Wheeler just out scooped you. Yeah. He might've. Um, I want to also mention uh, new Japan uh, Al before we close out the, uh, my segment here, they are running a pretty big show this Saturday. And look, what, what you can actually do is you can watch your SmackDown, then you can watch Rampage, then take yourself a little break from 11 p.m. Uh, you got a two-hour break, and then at 1 a.m., you can turn on Power Struggle from New Japan, and they have a nine-match card. The main event is going to be for the IWGP World Championship, Shingo Takagi defending against Zack Sabre Jr., but on the undercard, you've got Okada versus Tamatanga. You've got Tanahashi versus Kenta. Robbie Eagles versus El Desperado. Toru Yano versus the Great Okan in what I believe is going to be a uh, amateur wrestling rules match. And the list goes on. You got your your multi person matches as you go down the card. So you're gonna have the headgear on. Yeah. Toru Yano is gonna have the headgear on. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that's for the KOPW championship. So I'm sure it is. Uh, exactly. Yeah. And when you when you said there's a stipulation, like that's like that, that cup that he has that he's walking Yes. Around. So that's gonna be a fun, a fun show. And um the thing that's nice about this is up until about right now, New Japan has been running five match shows. They had announced that the pandemic <laughs> uh, the progress had improved to a point where now they're going to start putting together their more typical shows, which are usually nine or ten matches. And this one we're seeing is it's got five big singles matches on it, plus four multi-person tag matches. So they've got a full roster at this show. So that is fun. It is fun. And New Japan, yeah. again, it never disappoints. It's just 1 a.m. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's 1 a.m. to start. Yeah. <laughs> it's like nine matches. Yeah. Four, yeah. 4 30 when it's over. So yeah, it's tough. Well, well, that's why you're here, Rock. You're the one that keeps us updated with everything. You do the work I for us. So. Sort through all the bullshit, man. That's it. <laughs> James Wheeler. I'm sorting through all the bullshit. <laughs> so. Okay. I'm going to get in trouble for that, but okay. Oh, sorry. My bad. Yeah. <laughs> He's probably not watching. <laughs> do, do what you want on their morning show. He's in class right now. He watches replays, though. Yeah, commission. I got to get him on. He'll be on in December uh, to talk a little pigskin eventually. He's uh, he's still got class, though. Yeah. So, Ryan Joy, uh, thank you for the report. We're going to keep you on, though, because we're going to uh, just go right back into your wheelhouse with AEW. We will uh, let's see, let's put, yeah, that up there. bring back in John Smith. We're going to bring back in John the Connie. We're going to go four strong. We're going to start with Ron Page. Late night, Friday night, Ryan, uh, the good doctor, was in a trick-or-treat match. I do believe this was not a title because I do believe it, uh, she has a title match coming up at full gear. So. Yeah, this was a trick-or-treat, no DQ championship opportunity match. Uh, if Abaddon won, she would have gotten a world championship match. She did not win, uh, but Britt Baker only got through by the very, very skin of her teeth. Um, there, this match had thumbtacks. It had a lot of crazy stuff. I think it was a really good showing for Abaddon because uh, the match held up. The match was very, very good. And I don't think people really were expecting much out of it. So when they brought out the tax and and the the character spots, right? When, when Britt Baker did really, really good character work alongside Abaddon where she's in a spot, she's just getting ready to put in the lockjaw and she looks at Abaddon and she's like, Maybe I won't do that. <laughs> so it ultimately ends up with a roll up in the thumbtacks for the one, two, three. But man, Britt Baker is not scared of those tacks at all. No, I, say, I, I think when you, when you give me that pairing, I, I do them. I mean, this is because, you know, Britt, like, Britt's a blood bad. You know, that's, her, that's who she is now. She's just a yeah. blood mess. And, you know, Abaddon's going to be hurt. So that, I'm glad that they shined with it. Um, and, and Ryan, it's not by the skin of her teeth. It's by the skin of her bright, uh, bright white, smiling, beautiful, pearly white. Yeah. Teeth. Okay. Fair. She is a dentist. She is a dentist. She knows how to cage hair. Oh, there you go. <laughs> uh, Dante Martin defeated Max Idell uh, after a double springboard moonsault. Dante celebrated with his win over his new mentor, Leo Rush. Uh, did Leo Rush ever go back over his business plan on how he got his money? Because it sounded very complicated. He invested, yeah. he loaned money to like with hotels or something, if I remember correctly. I don't know. But then we have the World Title Eliminator Tournament. So I'm going to put up the graphic here <laughs> from 5 minutesbellcomcom and Ryan Joy. Last Friday on, on Rampage, Brian Danielson... He defeated Eddie Kingston uh, to advance to the final. He will be at full gear in the, the tournament final. Uh, he got the Kingston, uh, do, 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 yeah, the head and arm triangle. Kingston passed out, but he never tapped out, so he's a little upset by that. We'll get into that in a little bit. But then last Wednesday on Dynamite uh, in the semifinals, there were, you know, Fridays, Wednesdays before Friday, so just, we're still in the semifinals there. John Moxley defeated Preston Vance. Uh, in two minutes. So, um, John the County had that here. Mox was clearly late for another meeting. So, uh, he made short work of Preston Vance. And what we have coming up this Wednesday on Dynamite is the other half of the semifinals, uh, where Orange Cassidy will take on John Moxley. The winner will advance to full gear and, uh, go one on one with Brian Danielson. Uh, and, and the winner gets, uh, an opportunity at the AEW Championship. So Ryan Joy is our senior AEW correspondent. 
Uh, you got Moxley, you got Cassidy. I, I, it's really hard not to pick Moxley here. He's wrestled a total of like three minutes over two matches and absolutely destroyed both opponents. So um, I don't think he'll roll over Orange Cassidy too quick, but I wouldn't be surprised if he does. So John Moxley. John Smith, the over-under. How about that then? We'll play that because I don't think anyone's betting against Moxley. I think the minute these brackets came out, everyone was like, awesome, we're getting Moxley and Danielson at full gear. This is going to be great. Uh, we do have to go back and see if there any was any uh, Daniel Bryan versus Dean Ambrose matches. I think that would be fun to watch. You know, hindsight's twenty twenty. You know, all those years ago. Uh, I'm not trying to compare the two. They're two different characters, and they and Moxley's definitely a different character than he was back then. But what do we have an over under John Smith of the time of Moxley and Orange Cassidy? I'm picking Orange Cassidy. Okay, I, I will. Okay, John Smith, <laughs> yeah. I, I think they're gonna. I, I think they're just gonna throw us a curveball. I don't think he, like maybe there's gonna be some interference or the, the, maybe it's the raw roll up. But um, I think they're gonna give us something different. I don't think they want to give us two WWE guys in like going for their title. Even though like at this point Moxley, you know, isn't considered a WWE guy. That it's still like, hey, we've seen this before. You know. Yeah. John DeConn. Yeah. I'm going to go with Mox in this situation because I think that's just too tantalizing for the pay-per-view to put those two against each other. But I guess I wouldn't be completely shocked if they went with Cassidy because he is certainly a guy that they love, uh, you know, to, to build. Or, you know, he's obviously the future. I don't I don't know how old he is, but, you know, he seems like one of those guys that's going to be an AEW lifer. Was he one, is he the pillar? Was he one of uh, MJF's four pillars? Was it himself, right? I, I did see that. He got himself. He got uh, Sammy. Jungle Boy. Jungle, uh, Jungle Boy Nerd. and... Uh, and uh, John Kipsey. Smith, if this wasn't for points, would you change your pick? Um, I don't know. Maybe I might go the safe route if, if it was for points. I don't okay. know. I didn't really think... I, I didn't even think of it like that, to be honest with yeah, you. Yeah, I'm going Mox just because that was my initial thought. And the last time I changed my bet, it cost me 33 grand. Um, <laughs> 33 <laughs> <Yes>. grand. <laughs> Evan Jets. Um, I I think I don't think people would be upset if the if, if Full Gear was Orange Cassidy versus Brian Danielson. I think that's a great match. It's a yeah. it's a pay per view quality match. I just think people might get upset because they got robbed of Moxley and Danielson, especially if it's this new Moxley. It's not you know exactly Dean Ambrose is officially dead. He, John Smith is right. He's not a WWE anymore. So now you have. You know, set Brian Danielson straight, I guess, type deal. And I said, I wouldn't be – you can go two ways. We, we're going to talk about it. You guys will talk about it next week. I'll, I'll throw the question out there now, you know. You're going to have Kenny Omega versus Brian Danielson for the title, or you're going to have Adam Page versus John Moxley. Those, are, I think, are the two options when you're picking those two matches. I don't think they'll be intertwined. I don't think we're getting Omega and Moxley again, and I don't think they're going to give us face versus face with Danielson and Page. So – that's where my head's at. Uh, there was a eight-man tag team. That sounds like more like AEW. Eight-man tag team Ooh. match between the Dark Order and the Elite last Wednesday on Dynamite. It was Halloween night. Um, John DeConnie, I believe uh, when I restarted my computer, we didn't discuss who was going to do this match. Uh, mm -hmm. I do believe that the conversation before my computer went dead that it was going to be you. So I'm going to ask you the same question that I asked myself because I got really excited watching Dynamite with John Smith when I saw the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man. I'm like, oh my God, Nevea is debuting on AEW. Because <laughs> Nevea was a Stay Puft Marshmallow Man last year. <laughs> You're telling me that wasn't Nevea. I, I think you are correct. <laughs> there goes Adam Page ripping off Nevaeh. How about that one for you, John DeConi? That that is something you probably are never going to be able to say again in the history of this show. <laughs> anything, anything off Nevaeh. <laughs> uh, yeah. So we had uh, the Dark Order facing the Super Elite. Uh, Super Elite came out dressed as the Ghostbusters, and they brought the uh, baby Nakaz Naka Nakazawa. My bad. I almost said Nakamura. <laughs> Uh, Nakazawa and the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man along with them. And like every uh, elite match, uh, especially any Bucks match, it broke down into utter madness. There was 
craziness going on all over the place. At one point, we got uh, some extra members of the Dark Order coming down, uh, including someone dressed with a large horse head on. And as the other two members of the, the, the other two extra members of the Dark Order got knocked off, they dragged the horse headed man into the ring for a four way BTE trigger on his big dumb horse head. And they assumed they were going to unveil a member of the Dark Order, but instead it was Brandon Cutler. He was taped up around his mouth, he had no way to communicate. But wait a minute. If Cutler's under the horse's head, who is the Stave Puff Marshmallow Man? Well, he unveiled himself to be Hangman Adam Page, uh, hanging out right behind Matt Jackson, who was the only one left in the ring at that moment. He took out Jackson. Omega came in. He grabbed Omega, dropped him with the dead eye pile, that backpack pile driver that looks absolutely insane every time he does it. And then John Silver, who was actually in the match and could uh, hit a move and go for a pin, he hits the spin doctor on Matt Jackson, gets the one, two, three, and it is a banner night for the Dark Order. It is, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to leak into this Friday's Rampage uh, where John Silver – talk about a dream match I didn't know I want <laughs> until I saw this graphic. Yes, give me John Silver. Yes, give me Adam, uh, Adam Cole, baby. Uh, Ryan Joy is our senior AE course, uh, AW correspondent. Uh, how hungry does Johnny have to be to get the win here? Very. I, I think. Uh, I think that there's there's almost no chance he does. I think it's going to be a very good match, but I think um, I think Adam Cole is going to going to win this. I don't. I don't think they're beating Adam Cole or Daniel Bryan anytime soon. Um, I just. I think they're gonna they're gonna be in that position, especially if Adam Page beats uh, beats Kenny Omega. Then I think Adam Cole is probably getting a title shot down the line. So I yeah, think he's gonna keep up. winning. Yeah, then Adam Cole wins it, and now Kenny gets jealous, and then the elite starts breaking up. There's a lot you can do with that storyline, John Smith. Yeah, give me Adam Cole. He's gonna tower over somebody for once. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I've seen them, you know, stand back to back to determine who's taller. We'll see. I, I really hope Cole breaks out a height joke. He has to, John. The guy be funny. Excuse me. Okay, excuse me. He must be this tall to talk to Adam Cole. <laughs> no, I just, just let him be the, the the bully for once with height. Yeah, oh, that's fantastic. And just, like you said, uh, as soon as I saw this match put together, my first thought was. Well, goddamn! I'm really going to enjoy that match. Yeah. <laughs> I, I never would have thought of it. Never would have thought to book it myself. But yeah, I'm really going to enjoy it. Unfortunately, I'm pretty sure we know the ending to it. Uh, it's going to end with a Panama sunrise and a boom me, whatever you want to call that, and Adam Cole, baby, going over. Uh, and another match I didn't know I wanted to see until I, I heard about it and I watched it and I loved it. Uh, CM Punk and Bobby Fish. Uh, absolutely thought that was a great match. Uh, CM Punk got the win with eventually with the, the go to sleep. But that's not really the story that came out of AEW this week with CM Punk. With uh, Now we'll get back to this, Ryan. Punk, uh, Eddie Kingston pretty much snapped after losing his eliminator match to Brian Danielson because he didn't tap. He passed out. That's probably the fifth time that's happened to him in AEW. He really needs to stay conscious. He should know that by now. Um... <laughs> But I guess Punk had some choice words with him too. So, yeah, I don't know what uh, I don't know what what the deal there was because you know Punk was trying to do his interview and Eddie Kingston assumed Punk was laughing at him and boy that didn't sit well with Eddie Kingston. I can't tell who the bad guy is, and I think it's bleeding for me. It's bleeding over into the Moxley Cassidy thing a bit because I think if like Kingston's going to be sort of the heel in this in this punk story and if moxley were to lose as john smith has predicted uh i don't think orange cassidy is going to walk out <laughs> i think moxley yeah. will kill him afterwards so so yeah we're not picking this match right because they haven't announced it or anything right no no they haven't i'm, I'm yeah. assuming it'll be a full gear to tell you the truth this is a yeah, full gear too. quality match in my opinion sure. um Imagine that though. Uh, Cassidy wins, he gets taken out, and then a full gear. It's just Daniel Bryan walking out, wins by forfeit, ref raises his hand, and that's it. And that's <laughs> how disappointing would that be? Like, that Something like that, yeah. <laughs> uh, John Smith. 
Uh, Ethan Page. Eh. Oh, uh, Ethan Page had Rock Boys in the building tonight as he challenged for the. <laughs> hey, all all we could notice was that he happened to powder his nose pretty poorly before he came out because there was a big chunk st- sticking right out the tip of his nose. I. Like, and then all the sniffles were a confirmation of what we were thinking. And Rock yeah, boys in the building tonight. Ethan Page, go get him, Tiger. Yeah, I don't even like. I don't even remember the match at this point. No. All I can think about <laughs> is the fact that we got two Ethan Page is fucking rock jacked out, out of his mind. <laughs> we rewound it twice. Like, are we sure before we report on this? <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> I know a rock when I see it. Uh, Sabre and Guevara got the win. I uh, got the uh, double legged flips into a jackknife cover for the win. 10 minutes, 58 seconds. It was, I guess it was after the match. So, uh, what that match is leading into at full gear is going to be a five on five where the inner circle is now going to fight uh, the, the men of the year, Scorpio Sky and Ethan Page, uh, as well as three members of America Top Team uh, that I guess Jericho gets to choose, that the inner circle gets to choose. So, that should be uh, interesting to see where they go with that. And, it, you know, like I said, at, at full gear. Uh, if these guys can, you know, kind of wrestle safely. So, <laughs> see where it goes from there. Uh, we had the TBS Championship Tournament. Here are the brackets supplied by MinutesToBellTime.com. Going forward, we have two matches coming up this week. Uh, last week, Har- Karo Shida, she got, finally got win number 50. And she used the trophy she was supposed to get the week prior uh, to win it. So, uh, good for her. That was a fun, nice little uh, what goes around, comes around situation. And her win over uh, Serena Deeb. So uh, we're going to go backtracking uh, back in time because we're going to book Sheeta and Nyla Rose. Once again, the one thing I love about AEW is they don't get the same matches over and over again. We're going to have Ricardo Sheeta and Nyla Rose uh, <laughs> uh, in the next round of the tournament. But we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Uh, this Wednesday on Dynamite, we have Anna J versus Jamie Hayter. On Friday night on Rampage, we have the Bunny versus Red Velvet. Uh, I will leave this up so you can remember the participants. But John DeConi, who do you got? Okay, in the uh, in the first one, as much as I want to see Anna J move on in this tournament, it just it just looks too perfect to have Hater face uh, Thunder Rosa in that second round. So I'm going to go with Jamie Hater. And in the Bunny and Red Velvet. Oh, Jesus. Are they really going to feed Red Velvet to Jade Cargo again? Uh, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, you don't get a lot of repeat matches in AEW, John. <laughs> Apparently in the women's division you do. <laughs> when there's only, you know, 15 of them and not 125, I guess. Uh, John Smith, who do you got? Um, I'm going to say... Yeah, give me Jamie Hader also, and give me the bunny. All right. Brian Joy. Yeah, Jamie Hader. And I think, by the way, Jamie Hader and Thunder Rose is going to be a great match. Um, and then Red Velvet on the bottom. Yes, they're feeding Red Velvet back to Jade Cargill again. Okay. I, that's, uh, that's sure. I know we're not supposed to talk religion on this show, but I'm going to go contrarian on this one to you, Ryan. Um is Anna J done already, or is it like is it Jamie Hayter's time? Because I, I just figured like that huge. I want to say it was a huge feud, but it was a big enough feud where it went weeks on end between the the Bunny and Penelope Ford against Anna J and Ty Conti. Ty Conti's getting a championship match out of this. Yeah. Um. Why wouldn't Anna J still have the momentum and the Bunny still had the momentum to go forward against two women who? You know, Red Velvet, you see every once in a while, but Jamie Hayter's, I don't want to say his sidekick, but I don't want to compare her to Kimberly because she's not. She's better, but she's Kimberly. Let me, uh, if, you, if you don't mind, I'll respond to this, but could you put the graphic yeah. back up? Yeah, sure thing. Um, what's weird about this well, Put one... your middle finger away, Ryan. Come on, be grow up. <laughs> 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 what is interesting to me about this whole, this whole tournament is the opening round contests, your Anna J, Jamie Hader, Bunny, Red Velvet, Ruby Soho, Penelope Ford, Sheeta, and Deeb, I don't think they matter. I, I think it was just we're going to put them in the tournament as a consolation. It's going to come down to, I think, 
Nyla Rose, Chris Statlander, Thunder Rosa, and Jade Cargill, the people who got buys in the first round. So rather than just make it a four-person tournament, they added all these other people in. Oh, but... yeah. No, it's, it's, it's great television. And, and Ryan, we, we did a whole daily wrestling news show about brackets and how much we love them. So, yeah. like, yeah, this is great. Now we got buys, and then we got this, that, and the other. It's, just, it's, it's phenomenal. I, don't... I absolutely love it. I don't think that like Anna J is like pushes over or anything like that. It's just I I, I you know I think it's Ty Conti's time to get a shot um, at the pay per view, which I don't think she's winning that either. But Anna J, I, I yeah, I just don't I don't see her getting getting through. I think Jamie Hader is going to get. You know though, it, I know none of us picked her. Uh, maybe you were going to Al, but she could win that match. She could get past Jamie Hader, but she's not getting past Thunder Rosa. I did pick Anna Jay. No, I'm taking Anna oh, Jay and the okay. Bunny just based off their prior. Like, you no, know, they had ah. the star so, power. So wait I okay. have Anna Jay, like you know, people who we know and we're rooting for, and it's you know. So so get so get going back to this. Then I want to ask: Are you saying that Anna Jay and the Bunny are going to be there in the semis? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you, you're just gonna tease that that could happen. <laughs> no, no, I'm just no, I'm just saying that like, I think they're, they're gonna win their first. No, they, you're exactly right. The four women that get the buys, that's gonna that should be the final four. I would actually throw a, a wrench in that. Who, who's Ruby fighting? I would throw Ruby the wrench in. Chris Statlin, I think Ruby would okay. be Chris Statlin. That'll be the one person uh, who's getting a buy that wouldn't advance to the semifinal. But I think yeah, Thunder Rose I, and Nyla Rose, maybe even Nyla's questionable. You know, it's yeah. it all depends if Kendo sticks are involved. I think I she did. Yeah, she'd have, she'd have got the chair shots from Deeb after the match, which I yeah. think are gonna yeah get her out. Yeah. So, I agree with uh, the Ruby thing. I just I I had Statlander pegged to win this title, and now I'm I'm second guessing it because of she's matched up against yeah. Ruby. Yep. Well, at least uh, your pick made the bracket. Uh, keep on going, Layla Hirsch. Rocks, you know, go strong. <laughs> Um, they're going be having this whole thing. I guess uh, Cody's trying to win the fans back. He threw his shoes into the crowd. I'm shocked they didn't get thrown back at him. Uh, Andrade interrupted. Mal- uh, Malachi Black appeared out of nowhere. Uh, Pac, who's been having issues with Andrade over the years, uh, over the past couple months, excuse me, uh, he came out to help Cody. I'm not really sure if he cares about Cody more than he wants to try to get back at Andrade. Uh, they're going to have that tag team match at full gear. It's going to be Cody Rhodes and Pac. Going against Andrade and Malachi Black, the Selena Vega Dream Team. Um, but we have a singles match coming up this Wednesday on Dynamite. We got Andrade and Cody Rhodes. Uh, John Smith. Uh, you got your sign. You got. Oh, he's got his sign up. Yay. <laughs> um, um, Cody's booking it, right? Yep. Uh, Cody wins. Yeah, he's got to get the momentum going into the pay per view. So Pac can get pinned and then they lose. Brian Joy. I think Cody probably wins. Cody Cody gave uh, Malachi Black two two wins recently, so I think he's probably going to win here. Although, right. man, Andrade pro- probably needs some wins. So, but I'll oh, we'll the win at the paper. That's the, that's the where we want to go. I would love. Yeah, I that's love true. The, that's the, win. The, I love the Zelina Vega Dream Team here between Andrade and, and Malachi Black here. John Connie. Uh, yeah, uh, it's tough. Yeah, I really, Cody's probably going to win, but I'm going to, I'm going to go with Andrade just because Cody. Yeah. Let me just correct James Wheeler. Cody is going to be teaming with Pac going against, uh, yeah, they said the, the, they haven't announced the match. What's that? They haven't announced the match. I I looked on Wikipedia. It was announced. So, you know, Wikipedia doesn't lie. So, (laughs) So that's the match they had booked for uh, <laughs> full gear. Uh, and then MJF defeated in action uh, in about two minutes. They got into a squirrel with Darby Allen. They yelled. They shouted at each other. And um, oh, I should have downloaded my buddy Brian Everly uh, that I went to high school with. He's actually a collegiate. He's the head soft, uh, head baseball coach, excuse me, at Juru University. He looks exactly like Darby Allen, and he actually dressed up like him for Halloween. I should have downloaded it to give him props. Oh, uh, but yeah, it was pretty cool. Uh, we're, gonna, we're, gonna, we're going to get MJF and Darby at full gear. So that will do it uh, for our show. I forgot to, as, as much as I, like I said, I, I got some ring rust here. Forgot to print out my opening uh, segment. I forgot to print out the closing, too. So <laughs> let's see if uh, we can uh, fly through this real quick. I can Prime help. time rundown powered by StreamYard. Joey Jarzenka, Ian Schreier, Rob DeLuca. Friday nights at 7 p.m. 
on all of the Eastern Observer platforms. Um, uh, what is it? Yeah, go to the easternobserver.com for more information. As you guys all know, we've been talking football uh, quite a bit during this show just because we all took an L with the exception of John DeCani in our survivor pool standings. Uh, here's our list of uh, guys. Myself, John Smith, Ryan Joy, Tyler. Uh, all got nailed by the Jets. Uh, that had trap game written all over it. And uh, I trusted the Bengals to not have that happen more than I trusted Geno Smith. So that's why I chose the Bengals. Uh, John DeCani and Travis both had the Rams still in their back pocket. They made short work of whoever uh, they were playing. I remember they, they steamrolled somebody. Might have been Houston. They played the Texans, right? So here are our standings. Uh, as bad as we did is the same as the primetime rundown did. Uh, a couple of those guys put the Bengals. I believe Larry Park, if I'm saying his last name correctly, Park. Uh, yeah. He actually bet the Chargers over the Patriots. I'm happy he got that loss. So, uh, John DeCani, uh, I just, we'll just get to this point. We are still winning by uh, eight games over the primetime rundown. But John DeCani, uh, 8-0, you, my friend, I, I, I guess you won. You're the last man standing, so... Congratulations. We are going to continue with our picks uh, the rest of the week, uh, rest of the season, just because we want to see what our records are. Plus, um, Tyler's on the line here. The losing uh, program has to keep Tyler. So uh, there's a lot There's a lot of stakes on the line here. So we're going to keep going with that. Uh, we have the Daily Wrestling News Show uh, every Monday through Thursday. Uh, anyway, you're watching this show, you can watch the Daily Wrestling News Show and get your morning cup of joy with Ryan and his band of Merry Co-Hosts. As they sort through all the, I guess I'll just say it since he said it twice already, bullshit. Um, nope. uh, yeah, three strike <laughs> rule, though, Adam. Or Al. Yeah, three strike rule. Yeah, well, I think I dropped an F bomb earlier, so I'll just leave it at that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> if I actually, Wait, sorry, you Michelle. did, not me, right? Yeah, no, it was me. No, I, I know exactly where I said it, too. So if they bring up the tape, I'll just point it out. Um, Monday through Thursdays, 10 a.m. I believe John Smith will be on tomorrow morning. I will be on Thursday. And uh, we look forward for you, uh, to talking some wrestling with you. Uh, also, with MinnesotaBellTime.com, we have the Body Slam Brigade uh, by Ryan for you for free. Comes out at noon on Fridays. Um, so make sure we're, we'll be at 4,600 yet, Ryan. Close to 5,000 yet. Oh, yeah. We're, we're about five. We're less than 5,000 subscribers. Uh, get this weekly newsletter. So make sure you don't leak out. Uh, don't miss out. Then we got the prime time, uh, <laughs> the Black Hats NYC. Excuse me. I never have anything written down for these guys, so I'm pretty comfortable talking about how their new album, Free Cake, uh, coming up on their year anniversary, uh, the official band of the Eastern Observer. You can get them on Deezer, YouTube, Pandora. Wherever you get your music, you can get the Black Cats NYC and their new album, <laughs> latest album, Free <laughs> Cake. <laughs> This episode is brought to you by ProWrestlingPickin.com. You see what happens when I don't have my notes in front of me, and I, I, I take three weeks off. Completely forgot to put myself over uh, the beginning of the show, so we'll have to do it. Uh, Pro Wrestling, as I said, all the picks um, for this show and every show and the pool that we are in uh, is from ProWrestlingPickin.com. Play against your friends. Play against the universe. And guys, she'll like it too. Make sure you join us next week. Same bat time, same bat channel. So wherever you're watching the show now, you can check us next week, 6 p.m., the Essential Wrestling Podcast. Ryan Joy will be taking over uh, the show again for the rest of the month. Uh, I got some stuff to do. I got some things to do. So, uh, Ryan, thank you again so much for filling in. Um, and then taking over, and I think the, the you know the views are good. You said you lead off with Gary, everything's good. There you go. You're welcome. So, uh, anything, Ryan, from your end uh, before we get out of here? Yeah, I want to mention back May fifth of 2021, so many months ago, I wrote an yeah. article on MinsterBellTime.com. It was the I named the five dream opponents for Daniel Bryan outside of WWE. One of those guys was Adam Page. He was number two on my list. So if Adam Page wins at full gear and Brian Danielson wins at full gear, one of my dreams will have come true. Number five on the list was Jonathan Gresham, and he was recently released from Ring of Honor. So we're one step closer. Just give us TJP, Zack Sabre, and Nick Aldis, and we'll have the full suite. 
There you All go. Right. There you go. John Smith, anything to rerun before we get out of here? Uh, nope, nothing today. <laughs> John DeCani, um, today was your show. You, 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 you unofficially won the Survivor Pool. the last man standing without a loss. Uh, best birthday present I could possibly ever get. A personalized <laughs> autograph from Deanna Perrazzo, hashtag Jersey Strong. Thank you, Deanna, for taking the time to do that for me. Uh, John Smith, uh, John Smith, excuse me, this was your episode. Anything you want to say before you get out of here? Not really, sir. Just a belated happy birthday to you. I'm glad it finally got to you. It was supposed to get there in time for your birthday. Little issue with the mail here in uh, Hillside, but uh, it's not just John, it's not even just you, it's everywhere. <laughs> <There's> just, <laughs> yeah, that's true. There are people who still haven't got my wedding invitation yet. <laughs> no, like, it's, it's ridiculous. For 2020, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, for the 2020. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much uh, from at home for watching. That was a lot of fun to be back. I'm sorry I can't be here. I can't wait to be back in December. I said I'll get the Christmas lights up. Uh, we'll have a good time. Uh, Alexa Bliss, we love you. Larry, Steve, forever on our hearts. John DeCani, take us home. Thanks for joining us. And as always, we wish you the best in all your future endeavors. Now, could you get her phone number two for me or...